Hey everybody, welcome back to another Jog video. It's your man Jake, sexiest short king alive. You're watching gameplay while listening to my beautiful rants. Without further ado, let's just jump right in. Kamala Harris's campaign is now in full swing for the presidential election in 2024. While her momentum is strong, there is a definite possibility she may still lose the race. The prospects of her success excuse me, in the election and the idea of her presidential term appear savory, progressive changes to the American people in a time of worsening conditions and drowning hope. But one of the weaknesses arriving at the forefront of her campaign is the strategy of, quote, building up the middle class, end quote. Now, on the surface, it may seem like a good idea, right? After all, the American middle class is allegedly the selling point to the American so-called lifestyle in American society. The people here believe upward mobility is possible, that opportunities are here for everyone. But a small scratch to see past the surface shows the truth of American infrastructural integrity. This strategy of fighting for the middle class is a fundamentally bad one. The middle class, as I've talked about in videos past, fundamentally requires the existence of a lower class. The upper class is a tier of society which can exist in all forms, whether it's governments, corporations, dynasties, rich people, etc. But the middle class is a poor solution to the inequalities of modern-day capitalism and so-called democratic civilization. This policy of fighting for the middle class is going to backfire. The conditions in America do not constitute a situation where abstract terms like helping the middle class will actually land in the long run. Americans can see how little their government is helping. They felt the ignorance and meekness of the Bush administration, the apathy and emptiness of the Obama administration, the chaos and stupidity of the Trump administration, and the most recent unresponsive and elder-abusing Biden administration. Real policy changes need to show up. These things can't just be real estate business subsidies in the form of down payment credits for first-time home buyers. This first-time homebuyer policy completely rejects the countless amounts of people who do not have a current or otherwise permanent residence, or people who do not have absolutely perfect credit. Americans need to see real promise, not just on the campaign trail, but also during the administration of what will likely be the victorious Harris Walls ticket. If Americans see firsthand that the Democrats are unwilling yet again to look after their interests and help working class people out, then who's to say they won't become desperate yet again for the next salivating populace to rouse their worst instincts and usher in an American fascist era that would make Trump look like child's play? The two major political parties in this nation have gotten fat and complacent. They have completely forgotten the precarity of their situation. These parties could easily be replaced by working people at the drop of a hat. And the trajectory of incompetent and useless Democratic and Republican administration continues further, jeopardizing the integrity of the nation. But maybe this is just how things are supposed to go. But assuming we don't want them to be like that, maybe, just maybe, there's some suggestions available to us. Taking note of all of this, there seems to be a lot of solutions available to us. There could be all kinds of policy promises available for the Democratic contenders. More price caps on consumer goods other than groceries, nationalizing insurance companies or drug manufacturing companies, establish federal unions for various professions and fields like nurses or healthcare unions, uh, blue collar unions, women's unions, youth unions, etc. Abolish student debt as was promised previously, reduce military spending, ban congresspersons from owning or trading stocks, introduce term limits for all political office positions, develop green energy plan to reduce pollution and add hundreds of thousands of jobs across the country, and so much more. There are literally so many things the Democratic Party could do, but instead they're promising more border patrol, they're committed to funding Israel and committing genocide, they're focusing on NATO, Ukraine, and foreign policies which don't affect the day-to-day -day lives of average Americans. And this is just some of what we've seen. I'm going to make a video about this soon, but it's very clear to any poli -sci nerd that the United States is currently undergoing a nationalist turn as the Democratic and Republican parties continue to offer more policies which are similar to their other parties', parties counterpart while also ramping up the overall authoritarianism in this nation. For example, there have been 200,000 new police units added under Biden, there's been manufacturing, manufacturing of many cop cities, 
border control, price control, like I said, foreign policy focus on West Asia regions, specifically oil regions and Arab countries and Israel as the Western proxy foothold, controlling education in schools, covert censorship around anti-Zionism, and these are just some of the rising nationalist tendencies. I'll make a video on all this soon, but the picture is clear. It's time for real change. We can't rely on politicians for the changes we need. While building a middle class may seem like an appetizing idea, the reality is the definition of a middle class not only requires another group of people to be poor, but also is highly relative and doesn't actually capture the quality of life conditions which Americans need to be evaluating. Living with an extra SUV and cheaper college loans aren't going to make our other problems disappear or improve. They might actually even get worse. There needs to be comprehensive reform. There needs to be mass change where bodies of people assemble together to discuss our needs, ideas, and the true path forward. Within legal parameters, we can occupy our workplaces, libraries, schools, stadiums, parking lots, and assemble together in collective bodies to create new standards, demands, and alterations to our conditions. The more of us we have, the less we need to worry about any resistance. We don't need to live in fear of mass shootings. We don't need to have homeless people. We don't need to live in constant debt and financial stress. We don't need to drive around in these godforsaken awful cars and roads. We can not change. We can change our laws, our standards, our legal bodies, and form something stronger and better together. There's no point in trying to accept something getting worse when we are letting our home rot. This is not what it means to be alive, and this is not what Americans are supposed to be about. It's time for real change. The question is, will you join? And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked my video. Like and subscribe if you can. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comments. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.